Hello everyone. Welcome to Bridges for Everyone. My name's Jad. This is episode three of the Learn to Play workshop series. This episode explains bridge scoring. Bridge scoring is based on two simple principles. First, scores can only increase. There are no negative scores in bridge. And second, on each deal, unless nobody bids, only one pair will score. Which pair scores depends on the success or failure of the contract. If the contract is a success, then declarer's pair will score. But if the contract is a failure, then the defence scores. What I will explain to you is duplicate bridge scoring. This form of scoring can be applied to any level of bridge, from social games at home to world championships. Duplicate bridge scoring is based on rubber bridge, but there is one major difference. In rubber bridge, the unit of scoring is the rubber. A rubber consists of at least two deals. In duplicate bridge, each deal is scored as if it were its own rubber. There are a great many advantages to doing this, but there is one disadvantage. The concept of vulnerability has a major impact on scoring, but it does not apply to the first deal in a rubber, so it can't arise naturally in duplicate bridge. In order to overcome this limitation, vulnerability is defined for each deal in duplicate bridge. So what is vulnerability? and how does it impact scoring. For a single deal, each pair may be vulnerable or not vulnerable. If your pair is vulnerable, you will receive a greater reward for making game contracts, but you will suffer a greater penalty for failing to make a contract at any level. Exactly how much these rewards and penalties are will be shown in the scoring details later in this video. When you receive a pre-dealt deck, it will be in a holder, such as a wallet or plastic board. The holder will be marked to show the deal number, in this example, deal 31. It will also show the direction in which the holder is to be placed on the table, with a north arrow, direction names or both, and it will indicate which player is the dealer for this deal. Vulnerability is indicated by the abbreviation VUL or with red and green colours. Red is for vulnerable and green for not vulnerable. In our example, the north-south pair is vulnerable and the east-west pair is not vulnerable. This means that the penalties for failure are high for north-south, but low for east-west. From the north-south point of view, this is referred to as unfavourable vulnerability. But from an east-west point of view, this is favourable vulnerability. The other major factor in calculating the score is the call of double. You'll recall from the Learn to Play series that sometimes a call of double is used as a penalty double. If the last non-pass call in an auction is a double, then it is a penalty double. Fundamentally, a penalty double says to the opposition, you can't make your contract, you will fail. I want a greater score when you fail. Double means a greater reward or penalty will apply when scoring the deal. While it is called double, and some parts of the score are doubled, some are increased by much more, and some don't change. After a call of double, the pair who has been doubled may call redouble. 
basically redouble says, you think we will fail, but we will not fail. We want a greater score when we succeed. If the redouble is the final non-pass call of the auction, then an even greater reward or penalty will apply when scoring the deal. You'll see exactly how this works a little later in the video. Now let's look at the details. First, we'll consider the case where the contract is made. In this case, there are three parts to the score. The first part is the contract trick score. A contract trick is an odd trick that forms part of your contract. So they are the tricks taken beyond six and up to the level of the contract. The second part is the over trick score, which applies to tricks taken in excess of those needed for the contract. And the third part is the bonus scores that apply to different levels and types of contract. We'll start with the contract trick score. The basis of all contract trick scores is the score for an undoubled contract trick. This depends on the strain of the contract. For major suit contracts, spades and hearts, each contract trick is worth 30 points. For minor suit contracts, diamonds and clubs, each contract trick is worth 20 points. And for no trump contracts, the first contract trick scores 40 points and the other contract tricks score 30 points each. If the contract is doubled, then the contract trick score is easy to calculate. It is just double the undoubled score. In the rare cases where the contract is redoubled, it is also easy to calculate. It is just twice the doubled contract score. The contract trick score is used to determine if the contract is at game level. If the contract trick score is 100 or more, then the contract is at game level. This will be used to calculate some of the bonus scores. Now, let's look at the overtrick score. First, the undoubled overtrick score. This is the same as the score the trick would have scored if it had been a contract trick, 20 or 30 points, depending on the strain of the contract. The score for overtricks in doubled contracts depends on declarer's vulnerability. If declarer is not vulnerable, then overtricks score 100 points each, regardless of the contract strain. But if declarer is vulnerable, they score 200 points each. In a redoubled contract, the overtrick value is even higher. They are twice the doubled contract values. So, depending on vulnerability, they are 200 points and 400 points. Now, let's look at the third and final part of the score for a successful contract. Bonus scores. If you make a doubled contract, you receive 50 insult points. Think of this as being insulted by your opponents at the mere suggestion that you might fail. If the contract is redoubled, this insult score doubles to 100 points. If the contract did not reach game level, then a small bonus score is added. This part game bonus is 50 points. If the contract was at game level, then the bonus depends on vulnerability. If declarer is not vulnerable, the game bonus is 300 points. If declarer is vulnerable, the game bonus is 500 points. Note that only one of these three bonuses can apply. These bonus scores are the same for undoubled, 
doubled and redoubled contracts. Game bonus scores are awarded in addition to any insult bonus score which might apply. The final bonus scores are awarded for slam contracts. A small slam, which is a contract at the six level, is awarded a bonus of 500 points if declarer is not vulnerable, and a score of 750 points if declarer is vulnerable. A grand slam, which is a contract at the seven level, receives twice the bonus of a small slam. It is awarded a bonus of 1,000 points if declarer is not vulnerable, and a bonus of 1,500 points if declarer is vulnerable. These bonus scores are the same for undoubled, doubled, and redoubled contracts. Any slam bonus score is awarded in addition to the game and insult bonus scores. The total score for making a contract is calculated by adding the contract trick score, the over trick score, the insult bonus score, the part or game bonus score, and the slam bonus score. Scores for making a contract vary greatly. The minimum score is 70, and the maximum is 2,980. Now, let's consider the case where the contract fails. This means that declarer did not make enough tricks. The number of tricks that declarer was under the contract are the under tricks. The score for under tricks is awarded to the defence. Because of this, it is usually referred to as a penalty for declarer's failure. The penalty is different for undoubled, doubled and redoubled contracts. If the contract is not doubled, then each under trick is penalised 50 points if declarer is not vulnerable and 100 points if declarer is vulnerable. If the contract is doubled, the score is more complicated and ramps up quickly to penalise declarer. Let's consider the case where declarer is not vulnerable. The first under trick is penalised 100 points. The second is penalised 200 points. The third another 200 points and any more under tricks incur a penalty of 300 points each. As mentioned earlier, the consequences are more severe if declarer is vulnerable. The penalty for the first under trick is 200 points, and it is 300 for each additional under trick. In the case of a redoubled contract, the under trick penalties are twice those of a doubled contract. Penalties for failing a contract also vary greatly. The minimum penalty is 50 and the maximum is 7,600. You now have all the information to calculate the score for one play of one deal. Let's call this a basic score. These basic scores are then used to calculate the results of all the bridge played. In casual play at home, I just total the basic scores to determine the winner. The highest score wins. But in more formal settings, such as a bridge club, each deal will be played multiple times by different players. This is called duplicate bridge. The first step in determining the results in duplicate bridge is to compare the basic scores from all the play of one deal. There are different ways to compare the basic scores. My club uses match point scoring for pairs events. In this system, your basic score for a deal is compared to each of the others who played the same cards for that deal. If your basic score is higher, you are awarded one match point. If your basic score is the same, you are awarded half a match point. 
Match points for each pair are then totaled for all deals. The winner is the pair with the greatest total. There may be more than one winner if not all pairs played the same cards. In teams events, it is more common to use IMP scoring. IMP stands for International Match Points. With the increasing use of computerised scoring, it's now possible to use IMPs for pairs events also, especially in online play. IMP scoring compares your basic score with each of the other pairs who played the same cards. It assigns points based on the difference between the basic scores. The assignment is not linear. It is designed to reduce the impact of a large basic score. The assigned points are your IMP score for the deal in a team event. In a pairs event, your IMP score for the hand is the average of these assigned points. As with match point scoring, the final results are determined by totaling the IMP scores for each pair. This video has explained the mechanics of scoring, but in the modern world, Almost all scoring is done by some type of computer or with a printed chart. So why do you need to understand scoring? The simple answer is to accurately assess your options. Questions such as, should I overcall? Should I try a sacrifice bid or just pass? The best way to answer these questions and many others is by example. This video is already long enough, so I'll stop here and make another video of examples. This episode gave a detailed explanation of bridge scoring. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, this is Jad reminding you that bridge is for everyone.